Hey yo, two wheel friends, Zach Kortz here with Revzilla. Welcome to another episode of Daily Rider, where we learn about motorcycles as we ride. Our guest today is Yamaha's XSR 900. That is the retro themed, stylized version of Yamaha's three cylinder lineup and is for sale for $10,000. So the XSR is based on the MT-09, as some of you keen viewers might know. And what with the MT-09's updates last year, the 2022 version of the XSR 900 gets a lot of the same updates with the hopes of making it a little bit more refined and mature. Did it work, you ask? Well, we'll find out as we ride, of course, and probably do a wheelie or three. All right, buckle up, everybody. Here we go. All right, everybody, before we get started here with this XSR 900, a quick tip of the cap to Michelin, a proud supporter of this episode of Daily Rider. Michelin makes tires, as you probably know, for all the vehicles that we cover on Daily Rider and many more. And more importantly, Michelin supports this show. So if and when it comes time to put new rubber on your street bike, your dirt bike, your scooter, your whatever two-wheeled vehicle, click on the link in the description of this video and start shopping Michelin, and you'll give a little tip of the cap to the team here at Daily Rider. Okie doke, Yamaha's XSR 900. Um, it comes in this gnarly blue colorway, which I think is just lovely. Um, really kind of pops in the sunshine. It's got this little pale stripe, uh, sort of tip of the cap to early 90s uh, GP era of Yamaha's, I think, like the sort of, uh, I forget what the, was it a cigarette sponsor or something? I don't know. Anyway, the sort of Christian Saron Yamaha days, I believe. It's an awfully handsome motorcycle, uh, or awfully handsome color, that is. Um, some people have some trouble with the uh, new shape of the seat here, which is a, a little quirky. Um, and of course, uh, I've heard some call outs that you got, uh, you got a yellow on the tank, and then you got a yellow seat stitch, and then you got gold fork tubes, and you got gold wheels that are slightly different gold, and there's a lot of golds and yellows kind of mixing and blurring. Uh, but in general, I think it's hard to argue that it's not a handsome machine and certainly a more kind of hip version of an MT-09, that's for sure. And speaking of the MT-09, some of the componentry is um, uh, sort of largely the same. You got a fully adjustable fork, um, 298 mil rotors with Advix calipers. You do get this radio pole Brembo master cylinder, which is kind of nifty. And you get this big old underslung exhaust, which keeps the tail kind of clean. And on the topic of keeping the tail kind of clean, uh, the passenger pegs took a page out of the uh, sort of um, Triumph Rocket 3 or Ducati Diavel um, book, and they're pretty cool. So they hinge out like that, uh, and what it means when they hinge up, there's um, you know nothing kind of hanging off the subframe, um, which is removable, by the way. Um, so it's kind of a nice touch. I like that. Aside from that, bar and mirrors is uh, something that's worth pointing out. And of course, the uh, round headlight and the sort of like sprinkles of 80s retro stuff. Um, and then you get this little TFT dash here, which is ready to rumble. And you hear that typical three-cylinder growl that we've come to know from Yamaha. All right, that's a quick rundown of this motorcycle. Um, I say we hit the road, huh? Let's do it. Got a crew working in the parking lot today. Hopefully we didn't disturb them with our daily riding. All right, now we're rolling a little bit, cooling off from sitting in the sun. We can talk about specs as we normally do. So like I said, $10,000 for this bike, 9999, which is 500 bucks more than MT-09, uh, for whatever that's worth. <laughs> uh, you've got yourself a 31.9 inch seat height. Uh, as you can see, I got a fairly generous bend in my legs at six foot two. Um, and uh, yeah, which is lower than the MT-09. 
you got 3.7 gallons of gas, which is the same as the MT-09, and you have a 425 pound claimed weight, which is eight or 10 pounds more than the MT-09. So uh, you can sort of see it starts to, how, how the bike starts to take shape a little bit. Um, it is approximately the same size as the MT-09, just, um, yeah, a little bit heavier, uh, a little bit more stylized, and just slightly, slightly more expensive. Green light, punch it. <laughs> oh my god. What an engine. We'll talk more about that later. For now, while we're talking about how you fit on the motorcycle, there have been some pretty significant updates to the XSR 900 as it compares to the outgoing XSR 900 model. So uh, those of you who know the MT-09 might remember that the fork got quite a bit shorter, uh, the headstock moved down, uh, and that all happened to the XSR 900 as well, which means um, the riding position is a little bit more aggressive. You're pitched forward a little bit more. Uh, the handlebar is, I believe, an inch and a half, almost an inch and a half lower and uh, about a half an inch farther forward. The seat is lower than it was before on the XSR 900 and also scooted forward a little bit. And the foot pegs are slightly lower and farther back, I believe. <laughs> That's a lot to remember, so hopefully I didn't fudge it up too much. But what's really, really noticeable if you ride the XSR 900 back to back with the previous model, which I did, I'll have you know, um, is you really do lean forward to the handlebar quite a bit more than you did on the, uh, on the old model. And um, you might not notice it unless you ride them back to back, but the seat uh, certainly feels lower on on the new bike. Uh, getting on the old bike felt like the, the perch was quite a bit higher. All in all, I would say the ergonomic changes are uh, appropriate and I kind of like them. I, I like the, the slightly sportier, like a little bit more aggressive riding position that the new bike offers. The one thing that I would say is pretty obviously worse is the seat. It is lower, but it's flat and kind of hard. And um, yeah, I have not gotten along with it, to be honest. And when I rode the, the old XSR, <laughs> uh, the first thing I thought when I swung leg over was, oh, the seat feels a little higher and it's just a better shape. So I think, I think the saddle might've gone backwards, but first of all, anything in the name of progress, this is how it works with motorcycle evolution and also if you really really don't get along with it there'll be aftermarket options or something like that mostly what i found is uh, because the handlebar um, moved forward a little bit and down you find yourself leaning forward a little bit and even though i'm kind of a long person i always find myself scooting forward on the seat right that's I think it's kind of a natural thing to do is to sit at the front of the seat because it can it can feel a little bit more uh, a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more compact, regardless of what size you are, actually. Um, and you'll notice in the XSR, I'm going to point the camera down here, you can see see how there's a, a little gap there. The, the foam doesn't actually go all the way to the tank, which is an intentional design choice, uh, but it means if you slide all the way forward, you just sort of eventually run out of padding a little bit. And with that in mind, what I often do is just scoot back about, uh, I don't know, three or four inches on the seat and put my sit bones on the thicker part of the padding and uh, especially on the highway like this actually works pretty well because you kind of want to lean into the wind anyway and yeah just scooting back a few inches to me makes the seat a lot more comfortable aside from complaining about the seat the xsr 900 is actually pretty good at this kind of thing just kind of bottle along the highway and uh it's even got your um your cruise control we can uh, tap this button here in the middle then we hit down which is set and now we are cruise control set at 53 miles an hour. I guess maybe not a whole heck of a lot else to talk about when it comes to highway cruising. Oh, one thing I did want to mention is the, um, the foot pegs are adjustable. So uh, I think the standard position it comes is the lower of two uh, sets of holes. So if you want to raise the foot pegs up, I think they go up um, know, is it like three tenths of an inch, four tenths of an inch. I forget how many millimeters, whatever. So if you feel like you want it, the riding position to be even sportier, you can do that. We usually talk about fuel mileage here, don't we? Um, and uh, yeah, my low number that I got was 48, and I think my high was 51. So it's all right in the ballpark of 50 miles a gallon, which, um, I don't know, 3.7 gallons is not a lot of gas. 
to carry. Um, but 50 miles a gallon is not too bad considering the performance punch that you get from this uh, Yamaha Triple. Uh, Yamaha did claim that fuel mileage has improved for this generation of engine, the 890 cc engine that's in the MT-09 in this bike um, up from 847 cc's. They claimed uh, fuel mileage went from 44 to 49. So uh, I don't remember what the numbers are for the previous bike. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but uh, yeah, 50 MBG for this one. Not too bad. The last thing we usually talk about here is mirrors. And um, these bar end mirrors are sort of um, very kind of Triumph-esque. I think Triumph is the, the brand that always comes to mind for me when I think about bar end mirrors on late model bikes. And um, maybe Yamaha knocked that off a little bit, but uh, they work well. I like them. Um, they're not quite as, um, I, don't know, I don't think they're quite as good as a, as a conventional higher mount mirror, uh, but in general they're smooth and the, I think the worst part about them is the fact that it makes the handlebar so much wider, which um, if, you, if you can lane filter where you live then you might notice that. Uh, or for me, I push through a gate to get to my garage and sometimes tag them on the gate. Other than that, I like them. Ooh, and the mirror on that car, Ooh, that was close. All right, into the round town challenge. One thing I don't want to forget to talk about is the quick shifter on this generation of XSR 900 and MT-09, which is uh, bi-directional, so up and down, clutchless up and down shifts, which is pretty cool. And I think it's very good, very good. Uh, nice smooth upshift, especially in uh, these environments, actually, I think. Um, where quick shifters, you know, initially, ooh, that was a pretty good one. Initially, quick shifters were, were awesome because like, oh, you know, you can go to the racetrack and when you're holding it wide open down the straightaway, you can pop through the gears and that's really what quick shifters are for. That's where they trickled down from. Um, but manufacturers have, have worked harder and harder, I think, on making them smooth in every application, including uh, just trundling through your neighborhood. And this one is one of the better ones, I think. xsr has got a basic uh, cable clutch and and for that reason has pretty good feel I think Ooh. oh oh yeah, we're, we're it's not super graceful but we're clear in the uh, stop sign challenge here on the XSR I mean, it's that maybe it's that low seat height maybe it's just that my confidence is boosted from being on this uh, slick looking machine I don't know uh, in general though the fueling on the new XSR uh, and MT-09 is better than it has been historically with um, this Yamaha Triple, uh, sort of famously herky-jerky on-off, uh, but this new bike, uh, pretty good. And there are some downsides to that, which we'll cover in a minute here, but in general, I think the fueling's good, and um, you, can, you can change the, the behavior of the bike a little bit with um, these ride mode buttons here. So if you go to ride mode, you can see D mode is in two, uh, and if I flick this toggle up here, uh, we'll go D, D mode three, four. Um, so there are four uh, drive modes there. Um, and uh, D mode four is very soft. Uh, drive mode one is the most aggressive. Um, and two and three are in the middle there, basically, is what you need to know. Um, and I prefer drive mode two. That was the one I kind of settled on because it has uh, max power still, um, but still fairly smooth. I don't know. It's not. Uh, it's not perfect. It's not the top of the heap when it comes to motorcycle fueling, but it's pretty good. I got a couple questions regarding round town manners of the XSR 900, uh, which relates to fueling and the clutch feel and the stuff we're talking about right now. And the question was basically, is the bike too rowdy to be a reasonable bike? to ride day to day you know like everyone knows the Yamaha triple is punchy and strong and um, and effervescent um, but does that wear on you you know can you just can you just take it easy can you just ride it easy <laughs> um, and what with the drive modes uh, which help um, you can but also I think you sort of learn to ride it in 
uh, whatever capacity you're sort of in the mood for. Um, well, that's all the stop signs, by the way. Cleaned it. I don't know if uh, th this might be one of the larger bikes that's ever cleaned the stop sign challenge. I'm not sure if I'm just if I'm having a lucky day or what. Anyway, back to the point. I think that the answer is yes, you can ride the XSR 900 politely, calmly. It'll just, it'll just putt along. It'll just cruise nice and easy if that's what you want to do. Right on to Lover's Lane. We'll do a, a little bit of a weird, uh, oops. We'll do, do a little bit of an atypical situation here. We'll actually test the, we're set cruise control. I'm gonna sit in the passenger seat. I'm gonna put my feet on the passenger pegs. Don't try this at home or on Lover's Lane or don't try it at all. Um, it's not a particularly comfortable place to be. The, the seat foam on the passenger seat is uh, quite soft actually. It's much softer than I thought, but it's a narrow kind of perch and it's not very long and uh, I don't think a passenger, especially a new one, will feel particularly secure. And their feet are gonna be kind of high up too. There's not a ton of leg room. Um, but considering it's kind of a sleek looking, um, you know, the design forward way to put together uh, passenger accommodations, I think it actually works pretty well. Uh, and in some ways the passenger foam actually feels thicker than the, the actual rider seat foam, which uh, is a little bit weird. Um, so I don't think you're gonna wanna do long trips with passengers, but I think that uh, you'll find it's, uh, it's, it's adequate for getting across town anyway. <laughs> right into the twisty roads here. I spent uh, I spent a nice long day on twisty roads on the XSR 900 along with the older model and um, yeah I find the the new one to be better at this kind of thing than the old bike and I think a lot of it has to do with um, the sort of pitched forward uh, chassis and the the shorter fork um, the lower headstock that kind of thing it just it feels a little bit more in command and um, and sporty. One major difference from a chassis standpoint from the MT-09 anyway with the XSR is the swing arm which is quite a bit longer on the XSR. The XSR 900 uses the Tracer swing arm which is something like two and a half maybe even more than that inches longer than uh, the MT-09. So the wheelbase is quite a bit longer on the XSR than it is on the MT-09 which means it's a little bit less uh, prone to wheelie which uh, is either sad or performance oriented depending on your uh, point of view I suppose uh, and some people say that it um, it feels like a little bit sluggish from side to side compared to the MT-09 it's not quite as agile and and quick and that's probably true but to be honest I find the XSR 900 from a sporting standpoint to be very good I I really I don't have a ton of complaints if you want to go to a track day and you're a, an A-level track day rider and you want to really hammer and show the fast group what's up on your mid-size naked bike, then what you're going to want is a Triumph Speed Triple RS. That's the kind of creme de la creme of mid-size naked bikes on a racetrack that I've ever tested anyway. And I think that there's something to be said for that, but if you're a B or a C level track day rider and you want to go to the track on your XSR 900, I think you're going to be very happy. It's a, it's got good brakes and the suspension is, is firm and appropriate. And I think you have a blast. Good quick shifter. Yeah, do it. So the one thing with fueling as we turn onto this surface street here, we'll open the throttle in second gear just not a whole lot happens when you do that right down right down here like a couple 3,000 rpm in second gear you open the throttle and then it takes until like 7,000 rpm for it to kick on and the way you can tell that there's something missing there is if you go say 3,000 rpm in third gear and you open the throttle and you get a nice strong pull really strong and in my research I learned that there's something to that. Manufacturers are struggling with emissions and noise emissions regulations and as they differ between uh, Euro 5 and what's legal in the United States, um, fiddling has to be done with the tuning 
and the results in cases of some motorcycles not limited to Yamahas uh, is a sort of dull edge on the the fueling in the lower gears those of you who watched the sport bike versus sport touring bike CTXP episode you remember Ari and I complained about the Aprilia Tuono V4 feeling soft in first and second gear and yeah the XSR suffers from um, a similar thing and it's it's hard to really fillet Yamaha over this because there's still an awful lot of performance on tap <laughs> uh, as we'll experiment with when we leave this red light uh, when you open the throttle in first gear it's super fun and engaging and rowdy and yeah it's great um, but uh, especially on a mountain road second gear that's where I really noticed it um, kind of asking the engine to hit down low it doesn't have that thing that the that the original FZ09 and MT09 had um, where it was just this weird like alien stump pulling grunt down low uh, especially in, in the low gears but like I said progress is progress <laughs> All right, we haven't done much of a deep dive on the dash, though we have talked about um, this toggle switch here, which runs through um, the TCS mode, as you can see is manual now. Um, there's TCS one and two, as well as manual. I've got it manual because I've got wheelie control turned down um, and slide control and traction control. Um, all of that can be adjusted if you spin this R1-like wheel. Uh, oh no, it's green light, we gotta go. All right, what are we doing? Come on. Ridiculous. I would have waited. I was talking about the dash. That was fine with me. But uh, we're living in a society. Green means go. All right, now we're found ourselves in another red light. I can talk about this R1 wheel, remember I was talking about? You spin it here and it uh, runs through these little menu options. So one of the things you can do is you can change the um, you know, fuel gauge to be air temp if we want. 78, nice and pleasant. Green light again, son of a gun. If you click on this little gear here, you go into the menu where you can choose um, wheelie control settings, trash control settings within the manual TCS mode, as they confusingly call it, um, as well as all the kind of display settings and stuff for the dash, which is not exactly cutting edge but it is a full color tft um i like the adjustability i like the way the dash is set up i think it's fine i think it maybe betrays a little bit of the nuance and and uh fashion that the xsr is reaching for and in large part grasping with both hands i think um i think it'd be cool if the dash on the XSR was different than the MT-09, but maybe it wouldn't cost 10 grand if that were the case. I don't know. All right, I suppose we're stuck in another red light yet again. Uh, so I can show you the rest of this uh, menu here. Uh, manual TCS setting you can see here, uh, you can go in here and adjust uh, TCS traction control, slide control, and LIF, lift control, um, which is Yamaha speak for wheelie control. Um, I don't think that the XSR900 needs slide control, to be honest. I know I said that you can take it to a track day and have fun, and I think that's true. I just think that the uh, IMU controlled uh, safety features on some of these mid-level bikes is getting a little bit more complicated than it needs to be, I think. The XSR900 could have, you know, a traction control setting that includes wheelie control, kind of like the last generation of MT09 had. Have a setting one, a setting two, and have it turn it off. I don't know. I think that would be enough. So I said in the beginning that the uh, XSR900 was trying to be um, more refined, more mature. I said something like that, I think. And I asked if it worked. And I think it did. I think that um, I, I get the feeling that the team at Yamaha feels good about the work that it did. And, uh, and that this is what 
it had in mind when it set out to redesign the XSR. I, I you know, you can feel it the way you want about uh, the way that it looks um, and the styling updates that were made, that kind of thing. But I do think it feels like a, a, a high quality piece and a higher quality piece than it than it did before. So. Uh, that's my opinion and everything. <laughs> Dirt road shortcut. We are being monitored by these guys today. Oh, and for some reason I fell out of uh, TCS mode manual, which I'm gonna switch into back to drive mode. All right, down the dirt road. TC1 or whatever it is works pretty well actually. Uh, not exactly an off-road bike um, and one thing you'll definitely notice if you start going slowly on this bike is that the steering lock is brutal. It's so, look at this, that's the maximum steering lock. Normally I don't call stuff like this out on the dirt section here I know, <laughs> uh, but but as we'll talk about when we do the U-turns, it's just, uh, yeah, it, it's really surprising. Same thing with the MT-09. So, something to think about if you take your XSR 900 down to road. <laughs> the suspension's stiffer than the previous generation, which should be good for our jump here. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, didn't bottom out. Respect. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good, I think. All right, now we're back in manual TCS mode. We can see if it does a wheelie, and the answer is hex to the yes, it'll do wheelies. Oh my God, all day long, if you like. All day. <laughs> Such a good wheelie engine. Right, can we back it in? Sort of, kind of. You can put it in first gear and you can dump the clutch and you can get a little slide. Uh, but the ABS does not adjust on the XSR. That's not totally true. You can adjust the brake control, which um, will take uh, the ABS from reading lean angle in one brake control setting, which is BC down here at the bottom, uh, to not reading lean angle and just being sort of standard ABS. So you can do that, but you can't shut off ABS. All right, time for what I predict will be the XSR's nemesis, which would be the U-turn challenge. So we've only got two parking spaces to work with today, it seems. Keep in mind, that the BMW R1250 RT, 700 pound touring bike, did it in basically two parking spaces. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna crank it to the left, and we are not even close. Just look at the, the steering sweep is just really, and the fork isn't even that close to the frame. I don't, I don't quite get it. I gotta say, I don't quite get it. U-turns, um, not the XSR's forte, and that's okay. But um, we got to be honest with our reviews here on Daily Rider, right? All right. Kidoki team. There we have it. XSR 900 Daily Ride. We did wheelies. We went through the dirt. We talked about ride modes and brakes and power delivery and suspension and seats and weights and gas mileage and holy smokes. <laughs> Okie dokie everybody, here we go. Instagram questions, buckle up. We're starting with Kevin Rasp, who asks a pretty obvious question, but a good one, I think. Is there a reason you'd recommend this bike over the MT-09? Ha, um, looks, I think. I like the way that it looks. I, I think the MT-09 is pretty polarizing. Um, like I said, you know, this, this bike isn't everybody's favorite, but uh, I, think it's, I think it's cool. And uh, I think that's the main driver of, of why you, you know, you get the, I guess, you know, bar and mirrors and like, there's, there's some things, right? But I don't think anybody'd be like, oh, I gotta have that longer swing arm. <laughs> I don't think that's a big, a, gonna be a big factor. Um, and in large part, um, 
it's it's a, it's a similar machine. So I th I think that would be the main reason that I would recommend someone do it. But but more than recommending it over the MT-09, if someone just said I'm going to get that instead of the MT-09 or the MT-09 instead of this, I think what's cool about it is that there, there's enough parity that I think it I would think cool. You you're getting a cool, you're getting a good bike. Have fun with it. Now, time for some quick comparos here. Uh, the first one is from Tasif707, who asks, Kawasaki Z900 RS or this? Um, good question. And uh, I think the the Z900 uh, RS is a very good bike. Really like it. I think it's just a slightly more traditional, slightly more uh, mature uh, than than this bike. You want something a little rowdier, a little funkier. I think that's what this is. I think the Z900 RS is good bike, but I would assume the people interested in the Z100RS would be more like a 45 to 65, and this is more like 35 to 50. That's my, that's right, that's right, that's how I scale it. But if you're young and you want a Z900RS, have fun, get it, it's a great bike. Next, Comparo is iMan487, who asks, how does it compare to a CB1000R? Right, so this is Honda's Neo Classic round headlight, four-cylinder, 1,000cc naked bike. And uh, this XSR900 generation is a step closer to the CBR, uh, CB1000R, excuse me, um, in so much as it's a little bit more mature. Um, that's the thing that you're definitely going to find with a, a CB1000R, is it's a step above the ma maturity level of a Z900RS. Um, it's going to feel calm and it's fast and, and it, it's, it's a potent naked bike. Sure. Um, but it's, uh, it's even less, I think, uh, kind of rowdy and, and funky and punchy than this bike. Hopefully that helps. And last quick comparo here is from Jimmy. 540 who has has it compared to a street triple we talked about this a little bit street triple rs i think is a is quite a good track weapon and a good street bike in general um uh i think the the comparison to the xsr 900 and the street triple uh, between those two bikes rather is more valid than ever because i think the xsr has kind of elevated itself to to be in that conversation um and i think uh as an all-round bike this the street triple um is is excellent. I don't think that you will find a lot of flaws in the Street Triple that you won't have here. The XSR just has a, you know, has a bigger engine and it has a different style. It has a, it has a, a sort of an aura all its own. And I think that that is valid and worthy of driving a purchase decision if that's what uh, it comes down to for you. DL31 USA has a good question uh, that maybe we'll incorporate into Daily Riders in the future. I really like this one. What would you rate this on the giggle scale? One to ten. I like this. I like the giggle scale. I think the giggle scale could be a, a thing in Daily Rider, don't you? Um, that's really what it's all about, right? Is, is getting on your bike, going to work, or going wherever you're going, and, and enjoying yourself while you do it, whether it's city streets, highway, whatever you're doing. So, giggle scale. The first giggle scale rating on Daily Rider. Um... Yamaha's XSR 900. What do you think? I think high. It's, I mean, it's a fun bike. It really, that, that engine crackles. Um, it's fun to ride. I think I'm going to go, I'm going to go with an eight, eight out of 10 on the giggle scale with, uh, with the, with the XSR 900. That's a good score. I think, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's the first one that's ever been on the giggle scale. So there's nothing to compare it to, but I think eight out of 10 is a pretty good score. <laughs> Um, good question. I like that. And like I said, maybe we'll bring it up later. Last question is uh, one of my favorites here uh, from Handy Joe 84 who asked, if this bike was a piece of living room furniture, which would it be? <laughs> um, okay. I thought about this a little bit. I'm not a furniture expert, but here's what I think. I think, uh, have you ever had a friend or a family member who ha has like a vintage piece of furniture? Like, oh, that's a, that's a, um, and caraway rogers chair you know from 1972 um those you know oh it's a very expensive chair it's like very it's like fancy and it has this weird shape to it and it's like what is this piece of furniture? like why what? i guess i see why you like it because it's avant-garde and weird but like really as a piece of living room furniture and then you sit in it and you're like oh wow it's really comfortable i really like this weird and caraway rogers chair whatever <laughs> whatever it is. And, and I think that's the XSR 900. I think that people get drawn in from the way that it looks. They see the round headlight, they see the, 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 the bright blue paint, they see this sort of like retro styling and they're kind of drawn in and they think, oh, um, you know, 
a nifty retro motorcycle. But even if you're an experienced motorcyclist and you see the XSR 900 as a sort of styling exercise, I think you'll be really surprised when you get on it, sit on it, twist the throttle and ride it because it is a functionally very satisfying motorcycle to use and, um, and uh, a good piece of <coughs> living room furniture, so to speak. Thanks everybody for the Instagram questions. That was great, it's a lot of fun as usual. And uh, as usual, stick around for just a minute here. We'll put it on the Daily Rider leaderboard and then I'll let you go. All right, everybody, here we are. Inside RevZilla, we're up to our ear holes with ADV bikes. We got BMW GSs, so we got a Touareg 660. We got a Triumph Tiger 1200. We got a, maybe some other stuff too, who knows. <laughs> Bellying up to the Daily Rider leaderboard and the Yamaha XSR 900 ready to go up on the board here with um, uh, your Touareg 660, which I just mentioned actually. Suzuki Jixxus 1000 GT Plus and Harley Davidson Pan America, those are your top three. The XSR is definitely better than an MV Gusta Turismo Veloce. Definitely. You know, capability wise, the MV is, is fine, but, uh, but I'd, take a, I'd still take a Yamaha Triple and uh, also, this bike is expensive, and I, I don't know. The, the, the XSR is going to be above the MV. Is it above the Tiger Sport 660? No, it's not. <sighs> really? Really? Yeah, no, I don't think so. I don't know. I, it, it's tough. It's a tough one, but the, the Tiger Sport 660 is, 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 a, is an awfully good and capable machine. Not as exciting. If someone said they were getting an XSR instead of a Tiger Sport 660, I'd be like, okay, okay, absolutely. You know, I see it, I get it. Um, but I'm gonna give the nod to the, to the Tiger Sport for the comfort, for the um, practicality, for the, yeah, for the kind of like reasonable straight line kind of thing that it is. Um, as for the uh, historical uh, leaderboard here, Let's see, where's the Triumph Street Triple R? It's here. Would the XSR go above that? Uh, no, I don't think so. It would go above a Ducati Street Fighter V4 for ease of use and price and a bunch of other reasons. Suzuki V-Strom 1050, very, very good motorcycle. I think the XSR 900 would be here. That, yeah, that's, and it's below an MT-07 for the record. So there you go. <laughs> Okay, another bike on the board, another ride in the books. I had fun, I hope you did too. I hope you've learned something too, maybe along the way. We talked about a lot of stuff. Um, most of all, of course, um, thanks for hanging out and I hope to see you next time on Daily Rider. See you everybody. A bit of litter here. Got it. Don't worry everybody, we got. Now we can set cruise control put our litter away. I don't really remember what I was talking about now.